From the cross, Jesus said these words. Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. In the midst of his misery, Jesus dispenses grace on those around him. He has asked forgiveness for his tormentors. He has assured the second thief that he would find himself in paradise that very day. In great agony, he turns to those who are closest to him, the disciple whom he loved and his mother. Although it does seem strange to talk of a disciple whom Jesus loved, didn't he love all his disciples? Of course he did. But for some reason, at this particular moment, this was a disciple who was there at the foot of the cross. He was actually supporting Jesus at the end of his life. And that was something, considering most of his followers had actually run away and deserted him out of cowardice. It was thought that the disciple was John, son of Zebedee, but we do not know for sure. But whoever it was, this beloved disciple, Jesus was giving the disciple something to live for, giving him trust. He had such faith in his friend. He was also using this last opportunity to comfort his friend, because he was hurting too. Not as much as Jesus' mother, but nevertheless terribly hurting. That hurt may have been tinged with perhaps a feeling of guilt. Guilt because, well, maybe he could have done more, especially when Jesus was being condemned to death. How many times do we feel guilty, especially when we could have done more to prevent something awful happening to someone we knew? Then afterwards, we find that we are forgiven, not only by God, but sometimes by the person we could have saved from a lot of hurt. And why didn't we? because we were too scared to stand up for them, scared for our own life or reputation. But there was Jesus' mother standing by the cross. The anguish, the sorrow she must have been going through, staring up at her son who had been bullied, broken and was now badly bleeding. What a sight that many of us would have found hard to look at. But for a mother, it was truly awful. We have difficulty witnessing what one human being that is a stranger to us can do to another. How many times are murderous scenes on the news cut from our television screens because they are too shocking to look at? But this was Mary's son, her own flesh and blood. Now life had not been easy for Mary, not since the day the angel had visited her, saying, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. She was pregnant before she was married and there was shame. She gave birth while travelling and had to cradle her baby in a feeding trough. There was hardship and rejection. The little family had to flee to Egypt to escape murderous Herod. And Simeon in the temple, when Jesus was only 40 days old, predicted that a sword would pierce her heart. That sword was piercing her heart now. The presence of Mary at the cross 
adds both humanity and horror to the scene. It may seem strange, but contrary to custom and expectation, that Jesus is not handing over the care of his mother to his brothers. But here is an important and new relationship between Mary and the beloved disciple and has tremendous significance to us even today. For it, it illustrates that we belong to the Mother Church. In the same way, it should remind us that we are not merely a congregation, but also a community. A community that has the scope to provide comfort and healing and joy. To lift the spirits of those who come to us feeling burdened or afraid or alone. A community where we can learn to bear one another's burdens, just as a mother loves and supports her own child. Because as these lines from St John's Gospel remind us, in that astonishing moment, in the account of the crucifixion, we are charged to be here for one another. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. And so let us play, pray. O blessed Saviour, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, as you cared for your family then, continue to care for your family now, for all our brothers and sisters who live in fear or in hunger or in need. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>